Hello and welcome to the Warcraft Academy guide to playing an elemental shaman in patch 5.4. This guide is going to cover the basics of the rotation as well as some more advanced tips and later talk about stats and character customization. Use the menu at the top of the screen to skip between sections. As a shaman you have a few group of spells that synergize together to create additional effects. Flame Shock is a ticking damage over time ability. Each tick of Flame Shock also has a chance to give you the Lava Surge proc. This proc resets the cooldown of your Lava Burst and makes it instant cast. Lava Burst normally has a 2 second cast time and it deals damage to the target and that damage is 50% higher if Flame Shock is on the target. Lightning Shield is a buff that you'll apply out of combat. Whilst active attacks against you cause it to deal damage to the attacker. The main reason we use this is due to the relationship it has with your other spells. Lightning Bolt is your filler spell. It can be cast while moving, and every time it deals damage, you have 60% chance to gain back 2% of your mana and gain an extra stack of your Lightning Shield. Earth Shock is a low damage spell that's instant cast and shares a 6 second cooldown with Flame Shock. When you use Earth Shock, it causes any stacks of Lightning Shield higher than 1 to instantly deal their damage to the Earth Shock target and thereby resetting your Lightning Shield stacks back to 1. Flame Tongue Weapon is not a combat ability, but you should imbue your weapon with it before combat, granting you a 7% damage increase. Elemental Blast and Unleashed Fury are both talents. You can use either one of these, and sometimes you won't use either. Elemental Blast does damage and buffs either your Crit, Mastery, or Haste by 3500 for 8 seconds, and the stat buffed is chosen randomly. Unleashed Elements is a baseline spell that is made stronger by taking the Unleashed Fury talent. It will cause your Flame Tongue weapon to give you an extra buff, Unleash Flame. This buff causes your next fire damage spell to be 30% stronger and increases the damage of your Lava Burst by 10% and your Lightning Bolts by 30% for 10 seconds. Searing Totem and Magma Totem are damage dealing totems. You can only have one or the other up. Searing Totem is for single target and Magma Totem is for AoE. Currently, Magma Totem is not worth using on any encounter in Siege of Ogrimmar. For cooldowns, you have Fire Elemental Totem, Stormlash Totem, Spirit Walker's Grace, and Ascendance. Fire Elemental Totem is a powerful 5 minute cooldown that will summon a Fire Elemental to fight for you for 1 minute. When Fire Elemental Totem is up, you can't have up Searing Totem or vice versa. Stormlash Totem is a 5 minute raid DPS cooldown, granting bonus damage to the attacks of all raiders in range. Ascendance is a 3 minute cooldown that transforms you. Whilst in this state, your Lava Burst has no cooldown and your Chain Lightning becomes Lava Beam, which is just an empowered version of the spell. Spirit Walker's Grace is an ability that allows you to cast your spells whilst moving for its duration. It lasts for 15 seconds. For AoE, you have Chain Lightning, Earthquake, and Thunderstorm. Chain Lightning does damage to an enemy and then jumps to two extra enemies and does damage to them. Earthquake does damage and knocks down targets in a targeted area for 10 seconds, and Thunderstorm does damage to all enemies within 10 yards of you and also knocks them back and slows them. Finally, there are other abilities and totems that a Shaman has in their toolkit. Whilst these won't directly increase your DPS, they'll certainly improve your usefulness as a raider and provide incredible utility to your team. So onto your priority list. Your first priority is to keep up Flame Shock. You want Flame Shock to have as close to 100% uptime as possible and ideally refresh it during the last 3 seconds of its duration. That said, you can refresh Flame Shock early whenever you get a haste proc, such as your metagem or bloodlust. This will mean it ticks more often, giving you more chance for lava burst procs. Next, if you're using Unleashed Fury as a talent, which you should be for single target if you have heroic level gear, your next priority is to use Unleashed Elements on your main target on cooldown. If you don't have Unleashed Fury, don't use Unleash Elements. Next, you need to Lava Burst on cooldown and be ready to use it instantly whenever you get a Lava Surge proc, thus resetting the cooldown of Lava Burst. Next, if you've taken Elemental Blast as a talent instead of Unleashed Fury, cast Elemental Blast on cooldown. It's best to take this on fights with a lot of target switching, or for single target if you don't have Heroic Tier 16 gear. Next, use Earth Shock when you have 6 or 7 stacks of Lightning Shield. Now, using Earth Shock correctly is important because it shares a cooldown with Flame Shock. This means you have to choose which spell to cast in order to maximize your DPS. The main issue here is that you must keep Flame Shock up and refresh it in its last 3 seconds. This means if you reach 6 or 7 stacks of Lightning Shield, but Flame Shock will be falling off in less than 6 seconds, you wouldn't want to Earth Shock, since it would mean you wouldn't be able to refresh Flame Shock soon enough. 
That said, you also don't want to sit on 7 stacks of lightning shield and not use earthshock, since you'd be wasting potential procs. All this means is that you need to forward plan a little. If you reach a situation where your flame shock is expiring in around 8 seconds, you can either earthshock right then, or wait until after the flame shock refresh. For example, if you had 5 or more charges of lightning shield at this moment, it would be best to earthshock early so that you didn't waste any stacks and you were able to flame shock it in time. However, if you had less than 5 charges at 8 seconds to go, it's unlikely that you'd reach the maximum of 7 before you were next able to use Earthshock, so you would wait until after you'd refreshed Flame Shock. This all just comes down to timing and practice. That said, it's highly recommended to use an add-on such as Weak Auras or Tell Me When to emphasize when spells come off cooldown and to watch for procs. Your next priority is to keep up Searing Totem, although only when Fire Elemental is not up, and use Lightning Bolt as your filler spell. Now, in addition to your basic priority, you also have to factor in your cooldown usage for Fire Elemental, Ascendance, and Stormlash, each of which should be used on cooldown unless you have to save them for a specific situation. Before using Ascendance, you want to ensure that Flame Shock has a duration longer than 15 seconds so that you aren't wasting a global cooldown, refreshing it during the cooldown itself. You should also cast Unleash Elements or Elemental Blast respectively before using it, not during it, and also make sure that Lava Burst is on cooldown, since Ascendance will reset the cooldown. Other than that, you should generally try to use Ascendance on cooldown, but you can delay it slightly to line it up with other effects, such as if you have an internal cooldown trinket that's about to become available. You can use add-ons such as Tell Me When to track the cooldown of your trinkets, allowing you to sync them with Ascendance when the cooldowns are close together. Once Ascendance is up, cast Lava Burst continuously for the entire duration to gain the most benefit from it, although on AoE fights, you can use Lava Beam for huge AoE damage instead. If you can have Warriors use Skull Banner at the same time as your Ascendance, that'll also benefit you a lot. Fire Elemental Totem should be used on cooldown, assuming it can attack the targets for its full duration. The same applies for Earth Elemental Totem, although the damage from this is a lot lower. Earth Elemental Totem is higher priority than Lightning Bolt, but lower than everything else. It also can't be summoned when Fire Elemental is active. Stormlash Totem should be used on cooldown as a raid DPS increase, however if you have multiple Shamans in the raid you should coordinate your Stormlash Totems so that you don't use them at the same time since their effects do not stack. Ideally, try to use it just before Ascendance. Against two targets, you perform your standard single target rotation, but you use Chain Lightning instead of Lightning Bolt. Make sure to apply Flame Shock to both targets, assuming they'll both live for the full duration. Against three or more targets, your entire rotation is casting Chain Lightning as much as possible. However, on a fight like Paragons of the Klaxi, where the damage on the other targets is not needed, simply perform your single target rotation on one, but use Chain Lightning instead of Lightning Bolt, just like you would against two targets. Against six or more targets, you should use Earthquake on cooldown. You can also use this against less targets as long as you can position it before the AoE begins. Only use it if the targets will survive for the entire duration of the spell. Against seven or more targets, you should also Thunderstorm on cooldown. Remember to use the Glyph to remove the knockback before using this or it'll really mess up your AoE. If you can save Ascendance for periods of AoE, you can use Lava Beam with it to do huge damage. So with all that information in mind, here's how to open up in an encounter. First of all, ensure that you have Flame Tongue Weapon and Lightning Shield active. If possible, you can stack Lightning Shield up to 7 stacks on trash mobs before combat, which will allow you to use Fulmination earlier in the fight. Use a Potion of the Jade Serpent 2 seconds before you enter combat, and begin casting a Lightning Bolt immediately afterwards, time to land as soon as the boss is pulled. Cast Flame Shock next, followed by Lava Burst, and then Fire Elemental Totem. From here, cast your level 90 talent, whether that's Elemental Blast or Unleashed Elements, and follow up with Ascendance. Once in Ascendance, cast Lava Burst continuously for the entire duration and then continue your normal rotation. Other than that, you may have to drop Stormlash on the pull. If you do have to drop it, then you should do so after you use your Fire Elemental Totem. That said, it's better if you can ask a Resto Shaman to drop it instead, so that you don't have to waste a Global during your Nuke phase. You can then drop yours after Ascendance is over. So, onto your character development choices. Your first priority is Intellect, and then Hit up to 15%. You can use a combination of Hit and Spirit to reach the cap. As an Elemental Shaman, both Haste and Mastery are incredibly strong, although the values are different depending on the encounter. Haste will pull ahead on pure single target encounters only, however almost every fight in Siege of Ogrimmar is not pure single target, so we recommend a full Mastery setup instead. Having said that, this decision is personal preference and we would always recommend that you use Simcraft to determine your personal stat weights. 
With that in mind, these are the best gems and enchants to choose from. You can use the haste counterpart to these gems if needed. Note that gems have twice the amount of secondary stats on compared to primary stats, which usually makes the secondary stats on gems better than intellect, which is why we've gone for these choices. For your glyphs, most of the on-screen glyphs are optional for elemental shamans, as they all have their advantages. However, we particularly recommend the glyphs on the top row. Glyph of Chain Lightning is mandatory for any AoE situation where there are more than three targets that can be hit, since it increases the amount of targets that it hits, although it does decrease the damage it does. Lightning Shield gives you a 10% passive damage reduction whenever triggered, which can be huge for your survivability. Glyph of Spirit Walker's Grace increases the duration of Spirit Walker's Grace by 5 seconds, giving you more time to cast whilst moving when needed. And Glyph of Fire Elemental Totem reduces the cooldown and duration of your Fire Elemental Totem. This could be a DPS increase if the particular fight is more suited to 30 second periods of burst damage rather than 60. If the Fire Elemental can't DPS for a full 60 seconds, you should use the Glyph. Next, your talent choices. Now each tier may have talents that are useful in specific situations, whereas some may have one mandatory talent. In the first tier, any option is viable and fight dependent. Our personal suggestion is Nature's Guardian. Since it's a passive, it may save your life without you even needing to react. Having said this, it will not save you from larger incoming damage that would otherwise kill you, so Astral Shift or Stone Bulwark would be a better choice there. The second tier is about control. The two options here are Earth Grab and Wind Walk, dependent on the fight. Earth Grab can be useful for rooting adds such as Crawler Mines on Siegecraft of Blackfuse, whereas Wind Walk is used for clearing raid wide root debuffs such as Displaced Energy on Heroic Malkarok and Hardened Flesh on Spoils of Pandaria. The third tier is about your totems. Again, this can be hugely situational and your own personal preference depending on the fight. Call of the Elements can be useful on fights such as Garrosh Heroic, where you may need to use Tremor or Capacitor Totem before its cooldown is up. Our personal preference is Totemic Projection, as it means you can position your totems, whether it be moving a Capacitor Totem to stun a mob, or moving Stormlash to ensure it's within range of your whole raid to gain maximum damage output. The fourth tier is a no-brainer and should be Echo of the Elements every single time. It provides the most damage and scales the best with your gear. In extremely rare situations, you can use Elemental Mastery if something needs to be heavily bursted down, but again, this situation is extremely rare. In the fifth tier, you should take Ancestral Guidance. It's vastly superior to the others in terms of burst healing when needed, and it's also not a DPS loss since it's off the global cooldown. In tier 6, Unleashed Fury is currently best for single target and for high movement fights. However, if you don't have heroic tier 16 level gear, you should be using Elemental Blast for single target instead. Elemental Blast is also better whenever target switching is involved. Primal Elementalist is much more suited to burst damage and should be taken on cleave fights such as Galacris and Spoils of Pandaria. Finally, your gear decisions. You should select gear based on it having your key stats, Mastery and Haste. You should be using four pieces of your tier gear and ideally have shoulders as your off piece. The Shoulder Guards of Foul Streams is the best item you can select for this. For trinkets, the Immersius Trinket and Cardish's Toxic Totem are best in slot and should be the ones you aim for, but the Black Blood of Yushiraj is also fairly decent and is a viable alternative. For AoE fights, Frenzied Crystal of Rage pulls ahead on three or more targets and should be used instead of Cardish's Toxic Totem. Thank you very much for watching this guide. If you have any comments or suggestions, post them below or email us, and if you're interested in being coached by a top elemental shaman, click on screen for more information.